Okay, welcome back to Song of Songs. We're finishing up our parallel passage in Psalm 45 and verse 12. It says, And the daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The word Tyre, uh, the name Tyre literally means uh, the rock. It's the rock. It's Christ, Psalm 95.1, that the church stands upon. It's the rock that the church was built upon. The daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The rich among the people will entreat your favor. And we see this in Song of Songs. This very thing happened. Chapter 5, verse 9. The daughters of Tyre cry out to the bride. And they say, what kind of beloved is your beloved? Oh, most beautiful among women. What kind of beloved is your beloved that you would entreat us? And so the beloved is crying out to the church. Have you seen my beloved? I am lovesick and I'm, fine. I'm looking for him everywhere. So the daughter has gone back to her mother's house. And she's running after Christ. This is the bride ministry. This is during the bride ministry. And the church will look up and see those two people standing there and they will be the most beautiful things they've ever seen. Do I mean that they'll be beautiful on the outward? No, they'll look like you and me. <laughs> Will they be beautiful because of the, the perfect clothes they wear? No, they may be uh, 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 in dirty clothes and disheveled. I, I don't know. What will make them beautiful? The presence. The very presence of Christ. The presence and the peace that comes out of their eyes and the presence will fill the house because their clothing is covered in all of the, all of the aloes of the Lord. All the spices of the Lord. Their garments, their spiritual garments will be interwoven with gold of afar. So the church will look at them and see something spiritual. Uh, and they'll cry out, oh, and your beloved is in the house. And they'll cry out, what kind of is your beloved oh, most beautiful among women? Fulfilling verse 12 of chapter 45 in, Psalm, uh, in Songs. They will come with a gift of praise. The gift is praise and recognition. The rich among your people will entreat your favor. Yeah, they're entreating your favor. They're asking, who is your beloved? Who is your beloved more than ours? That's just what they're saying. What kind of beloved? If you look at that word kind, it means what? it's almost like what species? How come your Jesus is different than ours? How come your Jesus is different than ours? What's the first thing out of our mouth? Verse 10 of chapter 5. My beloved is dazzling and ruddy. The word dazzling literally is in the Hebrew. He is shining as the sun, the Shekinah glory. Mount of transfiguration. Ruddy is the Hebrew word Adam. It means blood in the face. He's Adam. He's a man. Listen, the doctrine of the Trinity is brought forth by the pagans and then brought forth by the church states that uh, God quit. God number two quit being God, came to the earth as a man, lied to everybody, even to Satan, saying, I can die and I can be tempted and I can fail. All the things that the scripture says God cannot do. And then, so he lied to everybody, fooled everybody. And then they say, then he went back to heaven, became God number two again, took up his godhood robe, put it back on, and said, all right, deed's done. So he's God again. He's not a man. No longer a man. He's God number two. But the Song of Songs says this. It says, when the, when the bride is crying out and giving an answer to the church who's crying out, who is your beloved? Verse 12, they're entreating you. Who is your beloved? She says, he's got the Shekinah glory glowing out of him, the presence of the Father. And he's Adam. He has blood in the face. He's still a man. In a perfected body? Yes, in heaven. But he's still a man. So he's not God number two. He still has the fullness of the Father dwelling within him. Just like he said, 
just like he said. Praise God. Not a great mystery, brethren. The church turns it into an ungodly mystery. Verse 14 in chapter 45 of Psalms. She will be held. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 13. Uh, the king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is interwoven with gold. So exactly what uh, uh, I was telling you that she will say to them. Verse 14. She will be led to the, king's, uh, to the king in embroidered work. The virgins, her companion who follow her, will be brought to thee. So this is very interesting because a lot of translations, a lot of translations in verse 9 of chapter 45, read it the same way as the NES, where in the second half of chapter 9, it says, uh, verse 9, it says, at thy right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. It's not true. That word can be translated queen, but it also can be translated bride. How do we know how it's supposed to be translated? Well, context. Context. Remember the old saying in, uh, in hermeneutics? Context is king. And so in the context, we go down to verse 14, and it says what? She will, future tense, be led to the king in embroidered work with her virgins following her. This is a bride company. This is a bride company. This is a bride. It's not a queen. And that's why Rotherhams and others translate verse 9 as bride instead of queen. Showing what it should be. It should be bride. It's a picture of the Song of Songs. It's a parallel passage to the Song of Songs. Praise God. She will be future tense. Praise God it hasn't happened yet. We still have a chance. <laughs> I want to be part of that bride company. <laughs> I want to be part of it. Verse 15. They will uh, be led forth with gladness and rejoicing. They will enter into the king's palace. With that Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 12. This is the parable of the ten virgins. They're not equal number really in the world. There's not only 10. 10 is a, is a typological number of five and five. Five foolish, five wise. Why five? It means grace. Equal grace is given to the foolish and the wise. So the foolish have no extra oil, but the wise have extra oil. They've been... They've been going through the sacrifices to buy the gold of Afar. They've been having their vineyard rooted up, all the weeds rooted up and thrown into the fire and, and plants of pomegranates uh, uh, and other things and all the spices uh, 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 unto the Lord. And every time that happens in your garden, inside your heart, more oil is formed. So on the day that you need that extra oil during times of great darkness, you'll have it. And that time of darkness is almost on us. It's almost on the world. It's almost on the church. Get ready. It's coming very fast. You'll need that oil. But that oil will make you glad in the day that you need it. You will with great rejoicing go into the marriage supper of the Lamb. But the foolish will be led out into the wilderness where they have to buy that gold of Ophar that's tried through the many fires. Verse 16. In place of your fathers will be your sons. You shall make them princes in all the earth. Fascinating. Fascinating. This is a beautiful picture. It's uh, in place of your fathers. In other words, uh, those who had your covering. And so people say, I'm safe. Because I have the Baptist church as my father's house that covers me. It's really a, a one of the daughters of Jerusalem. It's two different metaphorical pictures showing two different things. A father is, is shown as the one who covers and protects a daughter. And so that's why it's shown that way. It's the same truth. Your father's house. What was your father's house? What was the Catholic church? What was your father's house? What was the Baptist church? And this one's the Presbyterian church. And this one is the Episcopalian. And this one is, is Islam or whatever. Instead of your father's house, you're going to have sons. Isn't that wonderful? Isaiah 66, verse 8. It's a picture of the bride in the last days. Who has heard such a thing? 
Who has seen such things? Can a land be born in one day? Can a nation be brought forth all at once? As soon as Zion travailed, the church, she also brought forth her sons. With that Romans 8, verses 19 through 23. You're going to bring forth many sons who will rule and reign with Christ. The bride is going to bring forth many sons who will rule and reign with Christ. People read this, uh, this verse and they think, oh, this is a prophecy of Jesus. Well, in a sense it is at first, but if you look again, context is king. Look at the context, you'll see it's a picture of the last two churches in the last days. Philadelphia and Laodicea. It's the last two churches in the last days. And as Jesus walked that path, so will his bride. Verse 17, I will cause thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the people will give thee thanks for the ages and beyond. Not forever and ever. For the ages and beyond. Why? Because there's an end to the earth age. There's an end to this creation age. It's not forever and ever. If that were the case, oh, woe is us. We're going to get bored. <laughs> there are countless ages to come and countless eons of time in front of us. Praise God. Because if the angels themselves could fail and fall, then the greatest angel of all had fallen because of pride. How much more refining do the angels themselves have to do? And how much more do we than they? We need a lot more time and a lot more ages. <laughs> and I thank God that we're going to have it. Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 9, with uh, the end of verse 17 there in Psalms 45. And now I would like to return to our context in Song of Songs, chapter 4. And believe me, uh, uh, that was just verse, verse 11. <laughs> and there's so much more, and there's so much time, more time we could spend in it. But uh, uh, I, I want the overall picture to be heard while we have time. Okay, so uh, we only have a couple of minutes left. I'm going to go to verse 12. So we're back in our context of Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 12. A garden locked is my sister bride. A rock garden locked, a spring sealed up. Now we've talked about this already a little. A garden locked, it's locked, it's sealed for Christ alone, no one else. It says a rock garden. But in the Hebrew, and we talked about this, it's literally a stone heap. A stone heap is my, my bride. A rock hill is my bride. Well, what is this referring to? Romans chapter 13, 11 through 14, where Paul says, go outside of the city gates. Go outside of the camp out where Christ was crucified. And share his shame with him there. Jesus was crucified on a rock hill, a rock mound that was actually in the shape of a skull. It's still there to this day. It's just a big rock mound, bare rock mound with some weeds on it. That's all it is. But that's where Christ was crucified. That's where Jesus gave up all his rights to become the Lamb of God that was sacrificed for the sins of the world. And in Song of Songs, it says that my, my bride, my sister bride, is that rock hill that's sealed. Sealed for only Christ. That rock hill that is sealed. You see, the spring that sprung up when Jesus was crucified on that same rock hill is the spring of his blood coming forth to cleanse the, the sins of the whole world. But it's sealed up. The blood of Christ is sealed up. Did you know that? It's sealed up unless the Spirit of God draws you. And the word draw in the Greek is literally drags you to the cross. And if he drags you to the cross and that spring is opened up, that blood comes forth like henna 
and it covers you, that red blood. And henna is also woven into a blanket that covers you. And so your sins are covered. Jesus is a spring sealed up. And so is his bride. Jesus' spring is the blood of Christ, which brings redemption and cleansing of sin and life in the spirit. The spring that is within the bride is the very spirit of Christ. The resurrected spirit of Christ mingled with the spirit of God, mingled with your spirit. And when it comes forth, the daughters of Jerusalem will cry out, Who are you, most beautiful of all? You're not beautiful because of how you look on the outside. You're beautiful because of the spirit that they see emanating through you. Okay, we're out of time until we come together again in Song of Songs.